What's going on, everybody? RJ Joey here from SB Nations, blogging the boys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. Hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and I trust that um, you're feeling content. It's over, it's done. The Dallas Cowboys won. It was a victory. It was success, however you want to define it. Thursday Night Football officially in the books. And this is our post-game show here at Blog of the Boys where you and I are going to talk about it. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing right now to the Blog of the Boys YouTube channel. You can do so right down below. We're on a mission to get to 30,000 subscribers before the season is over. The season that is now, amazingly, already four games old for the Cowboys. They are even Steven back to 500 following the win. We're close to 23,000, our Jordan year, if you will. Make sure to check out bloggingtheboys.com. I already have several articles up in the aftermath of this game. Also, I have lots of social content up. If you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, threads, at RJ Ochoa, TikTok, RJ.Ochoa. If you want to email me, RJ.Ochoa uh, at SBNation.com is the way to do that. By the way, I had a meeting with some wonderful people throughout the NFL Threads community on Thursday, and I'm very excited about what's going to be happening there. So if you are not on Threads, you should get on Threads and follow me there. Lots of cool stuff happening and lots of cool stuff in the future. But we're here today to talk about the past, the immediate past, as the Dallas Cowboys were indeed victorious. The Dallas Cowboys did indeed win, which means that tomorrow, maybe today when you're watching this, if you're not uh, a night owl, is Victory Polo Monday. Even though it's a Friday, we run into this every year. It's Victory Polo Monday on a Friday. That's the plan. That's the situation. All right, now that you've been warned, let's move on. The Dallas Cowboys winning. Uh, let's take a look. Final score, 20 to 15, of course. And it was ugly. All right. I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this was amazing, that this was some sort of clinic, that this was um, you know, anything other than what it was. This was ugly. This was gross. The Dallas Cowboys barely held on and somehow found a way to win. Um, kind of tried to lose. I wouldn't say did that on purpose, but ultimately um, you know, <laughs> walked away very happy. Um, and feeling like they, you know, look, we said going into this game, we said they have to calm everything down. They have to stop the bleeding. They have to just go get a win and you get the mini buy. The Cowboys will be on primetime again next week. They're visiting the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday Night Football. So there's a lot of NFL games that are going to happen between now and then that will change the narrative of the season and, and make the way we feel about the Cowboys feel very, 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 very much in the rearview mirror. As Joseph Tribbiani once said, the line is a dot to you. That's how this will feel, I promise you, next Friday morning after the Buccaneers-Falcons game on Thursday Night Football. But let's zoom in a little bit here and let's look at what the Cowboys did. We're going to get to Dak Prescott in a moment specifically, but from a rushing standpoint, much has been made, some of it by myself, about how the Cowboys have had one of the more inefficient groups in the NFL when it comes to the running back position, when it comes to what the Cowboys are able to do or not able to do on the ground, the advanced statistics aren't out yet. Uh, I will discuss those in my day after thoughts video here on the Blog of the Boys YouTube channel on Friday. You'll get two videos actually on Friday. And in fact, you're getting two special interviews as the weekend unfolds. So be, you know, subscribe to the channel. I promise it's going to be very cool. But um, you're going to get the Bleacher Report stream that I'm going to do. We're going to toss that up here in the channel for you early on Friday. And then you'll have my day after thoughts and we'll go over the advanced numbers as mentioned. But from uh, an initial standpoint, low hanging fruit standpoint, Rico Nadal 11 carries 46 yards, averaged over four yards a carry. You love to see that. Zeke Elliott, five uh, attempts, excuse me, for 19 yards, almost four yards a carry. CeeDee Lamb for a while was leading the Cowboys in rushing um in this game that first attempt was wild lining up in the actual backfield i tweeted this in the moment had some shades of ty montgomery if you remember those days from mike mccarthy with the green bay packers um we don't need to see cd lamb on these end arounds anymore mike we don't it's enough all right go get a real running back and don't worry about doing that kind of stuff anymore hunter lipke i'll tell you right now uh is a stock up for me i love that he's finding some utilization this is only as a running back but he did have that very critical fourth and one run Early in the game in the second quarter, right before the play before, actually, Dak Prescott hit CeeDee Lane for that 55-yard touchdown. You see Dak, of course, those rushing numbers, whatever. Dak Prescott finished this game. We'll come back to him in a moment, actually. Let's look at the receivers. CeeDee Lamb, eight targets, seven receptions, a highly efficient night 
Um, and actually, one of the articles that I write every week is uh, the projections that NFL Pros model has for the Cowboys. I believe they had CD pegged for seven receptions on the night, so they got that completely on the nose. 98 yards, did have the touchdown. CD has two touchdowns on the season. This one on Thursday night was a 55-yarder. The other came in week two in the loss, the blowout loss to the Saints. That was a 65-yarder. So CD is really just kind of only good from downtown this season, it appears. Jake Ferguson, a perfect 7 of 7 for 49 yards. 7 times 7 is 49. I love that as a math fan. Jalen Tolbert, only three targets, but caught all three of them. I do think that we're seeing Jalen Tolbert's stock improving little by little. I think he may be surpassing Brandon Cooks in the wide receiver hierarchy, not the pass catcher hierarchy, but Brandon Cooks, four targets, only a singular reception, although it was an impressive one very early in the game, but then uh, got skunked afterwards. Rico Dowdle, that 15-yard reception, obviously. Hunter Lipke, we talked about him, involved in the passing game. Just a highly, highly efficient night. As you look at it, only one completion here on CD and then the other completions. I mean, you're, you're talking about if we ignore Brandon Cooks, ignore this blue line for a second, the only incompletion involved here was once to CD Lamb. None to Jake Ferguson, none to Jalen Tolbert, none to Rico Dowdle, none to Hunter Lipkin, none to Zeke Kelly, and there should be none to your backfield players because you're just dumping the ball off more often than not. So, I mean, the only person kind of holding this up from being an A-plus sort of report card is Brandon Cooks, which is why, again, we can have a conversation about whether or not he has or he has fallen, is falling in the wide receiver hierarchy. But I mentioned that we would talk about Dak Prescott specifically. I tweeted this out. I shared this on threads as well. Like I said, you want to be on threads, and I'm going to be sharing it on Instagram as soon as I get done recording this video for you. What you're looking at right now is my tweet, and I'll put myself over here. This is courtesy of NFL Next Gen Stats. Again, uh, my NFL Pro, Pro subscription is so wonderful. I use it all the time. I can't wait to use it on Sunday and watch the Red Zone channel. By the way, as Cowboys fans, we get a lot of Scott Hansen coming up. We get Scott Hansen this Sunday, obviously with the Cowboys not playing. We get Scott Hansen next Sunday with the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football. The week after, the Cowboys play in the 3 o'clock window against Detroit, so we have to kind of manage that. We get Scott for the noon hour, and that's cool. But then the Cowboys are on bye after that. That's all Scott Hansen. And then the week after that, the Cowboys are on Sunday Night Football football again visiting the San Francisco 49ers so lots of red zone in our future coming up but as it relates to this statistic I don't want to get too far in the weeds too far off on the tangent what you're looking at here is Dak Prescott's passing chart from Thursday night the green dots if it isn't obvious are completions the white dots are incompletions the blue streaky lines are touchdowns the blue line the horizontal line represents the line of scrimmage at all points in time and you can see obviously the different depths of the different passes the different completions the different incompletions etc cetera, etc cetera. you can see Dak Prescott finishing 22 of 27 that's five incompletions obviously um just a, a really 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 efficient night for him in every single sense 221 yards the two touchdowns at cpoe that's completion percentage over expected that means Dak Prescott made a lot of lemonade with the lemons that he had to work with. And I don't mean to call the, the pass catchers lemons on Thursday night, but I mean, that's really what that actually means. But the impressive statistic is what I tweeted there, that information. If you can't see it, I'll read it out loud for you. Dak, aside from his total stat line on the night, that's what those bottom those numbers are at the bottom. But more specifically, 14 of Dak Prescott's passes were delivered in under two and a half seconds. 13 of those 14 were completions for him. Of those 13 completions, two of them were those blue arky lines. You see those two touchdowns. On those passes specifically that were delivered in under two and a half seconds, Dak Prescott had a plus 21.2% completion percentage over expected. That is absurd. That is insane. That is a highly, highly, highly efficient body of work from Dak Prescott in this game. And what a shocker because he's defeated the New York Giants for the millionth time in a row. The Cowboys have now won 14 of their last 15 games against the G-Men. Dak Prescott has beaten them 13 times in a row. It really is amazing how poverty of a franchise the New York Giants are, but I digress. Anyway, this is Dak Prescott's highest mark in this particular capacity in a singular game since week 12 of the 2022 season. Incidentally, a contest that was also against the New York Giants, and it should not shock you to learn that that was a win for the Cowboys based on everything that we've just discussed. So an incredible night in that sense, and I think a night where the offense definitely showed signs of life. It was very clear early on that this was the Dak and CD show. This was the like, okay, everything has sucked for a long time show, so we need this to be about the show show, right? Like we've all done that. We've all done something in life. We've all, you know, I play a lot of golf. And so, right, like you, if you're a golfer, we've had those days where it's like, I'm I'm not crossing anybody's of water this round. You've just committed to that, right? And you've, you've decided 
when you're not emotional, that that's the best way to go about it. Well, the Cowboys decided that the best way to go about this game was to target C.D. Lamb. What a brilliant strategy, by the way, to target one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. I can't believe we didn't think of this before. But either way, I love that the Cowboys pressed and pressed and pressed and that they pressed with Jake Ferguson. I don't love that the Cowboys still don't have a, a tried and true run game, and I'm very anxious to see the advanced numbers from this to, to see how efficient it really was or wasn't. It felt like in the moment, and we're just going off of the feel at this point in time because I'm putting this together for you at 11 p.m. Central Standard Time on Thursday night shortly after the game finished, but it felt like there was a little bit more there, um, you know, and, and, and then a little bit less to be completely frustrated by, and I suppose that's improvement, but um, there's look, the reality of the situation is the reason that the Cowboys are having to involve C.D. Lamb in the run game is because they don't have a tried and true legitimate option there. I am all for hand raised. I want you to give explosive playmakers the ball more often. So in that sense, I am team give the ball to C.D. however you can. However, I am also team get somebody who actually does this for a living, who's who's primary job responsibility is to serve as a ball carrier and that isn't cd lamb's role as a running back you don't have that option and i'm sorry to those of you that think it's dalvin cook i don't agree with you i'm not saying the cowboys need to go trade a, a day two pick or anything like that for a legitimate running back right now i'm trying to tell you that this was a mistake and the cowboys are behind the eight ball here they're so behind the eight ball that they have to give cd lamb three carries in a game from behind the line of scrimmage to try to get something going in this particular capacity and it almost Almost burned them on the final possession that the Cowboys had offensively. They ultimately ended, or it ultimately ended, with a Brandon Aubrey missed field goal on second down. Mike McCarthy had tried one of those end arounds, and look, I have sang a lot of songs for Mike McCarthy, but I am not here for Mike this season as an offensive play caller. I don't know why he refuses to take the low hanging fruit or to develop the low hanging fruit. Instead, he's trying so hard. And on the one hand, like I was just saying, I kind of don't blame him because. He knows he cannot rely on Rico Nattle and Zeke Elliott and Deuce Vaughn as somebody to help you out on second and six. So he has to think outside the box. I understand that from a logic perspective. But if you're Mike McCarthy, you have to find a different way. It cannot just be that because that second and six run resulted in a loss of yards. And that resulted in a third down that was much more difficult in a 51-yard field goal attempt. And even though Brandon Aubrey is superhuman, he missed it. He proved that he is, in fact, mortal. He is, in fact, human. He bleeds like the rest of us. And that technically did allow the Giants 28 seconds to go what would have been, you know, 60-ish yards to potentially win the game. They ultimately didn't, and that's fine. But the point should be there's there's a, a great expression that my good friend Brandon Gunn from Bleeding Green Nation brings up and has brought up a lot in the past on the NFC's mixtape, and I don't have any answer for you on that. I apologize for that as well. But he loves to use the expression a moral loss. And if you're new to that idea, if you're new to that concept, you're well aware of what a, a moral win is, right? A moral win is when you actually lose the game, but your team plays really, really, really well. I, and an example I always give is that 2013 game between the Cowboys and the Broncos where Dallas and Tony Romo went shot for shot with Denver and Peyton Manning. You walk away from that with the actual loss, but you feel tall, right? You stand tall because you say, we hung with the best. We can play. It's a moral win. It puts some win in your sails. Well, a moral loss exists too. It's the better, you know, kind of end of the stick, if you will, in that you get the win. You you actually get the important thing, but you can take the lessons from a loss. You can look at this game, Cowboys, and you can say, man, dude, we do not have what we need on the ground. Man, we need to be utilizing CD Lamb a lot more. Man, Andrew Booth is not the answer on the outside opposite of Trayvon Diggs. Man, dude, we messed up. Right. Like uh, like Bradley Cooper in the original hangover on the phone with Doug's wife or Doug's wife to be. We messed up bad. That's how the Cowboys are at this point in time. And you can't fix all of that, to be very clear, to be fair, to be rational. You cannot fix all of that. But you can start to take some steps. You got this win. You stop the bleeding. You calm this all down. We're going to put our pitchforks down for a little bit because you got to win and we can all enjoy Georgia, Alabama on Saturday night. It's going to be incredible. And the full NFL Sunday slate with Scott Hanson on the Red Zone channel. And then a Sunday night contest that features the Buffalo Bills traveling to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Our hearts and our tummies are going to be full with football action. But you need to get to work. You have to figure this out because what you're doing here is not working. It took, think about the performance that I just described to you from Dak Prescott, the highly, highly, highly efficient performance that the Cowboys rightfully got from their brand new, highly paid quarterback, the highest paid player in NFL history, right? Good for Dak. He delivered on his end. It took the full scraping of the bottom of the barrel for Dak Prescott using all of his powers in all of his might to win by five against the New York Giants, a team that he has historically dominated for basically 
an entire decade. Think about that for a second, all right? How weird of an overall idea this is. The Cowboys didn't even cover. group, And it's often said, if we talk about expressions, that good teams win and great teams cover. The Cowboys won by five. The, the general line was five and a half, so it's kind of a bad beat. Sorry about that if you were on that. But if you got it at four and a half, hey, congratulations to you. I believe that's what it opened at, if I'm thinking back correctly. But either way, the point is, it took all of the might of Dak Prescott to barely hold on and beat a team that did not score a touchdown. In fact, the New York Giants were on the other end of this themselves just two weeks ago. Remember when they lost to Jaden Daniels and the Washington Commanders? They were the first team, what was it, in NFL history to, to score three touchdowns and lose to a team that didn't even score a touchdown, whatever it was. There was all the weird place kicker things. I know we talked about it with Ed Valentine. I already forgot what the statistic was. But you were almost that. You were almost that yourself because – you're so fortunate, Dallas Cowboys, that Brian Dable is a coward and refused. I, there was a great tweet from friend of the show, Dave Hellman. It truly was hilarious that Brian Dable developed this sense of going for it on fourth down way too late in the game. Like, yeah, bro, you want to go for it on your own 40-yard line? Be my guest. Beauty and the Beast said it best. But you don't want to go for it on the Dallas three-yard line? That's an interesting kind of you know way to rock. But you do you, Brian Dable. You do you. Okay, so the Cowboys have to take this lesson. And it appears right now that – uh, I'm making sure we haven't seen anything else, but it appears that Micah Parsons is going to be okay. That is a wonderful uh, bit of news. Yeah, I still haven't seen a piece of news as I record this video for you, but of course, stay tuned to Blog of the Boys and myself on social media. I uh, haven't seen anything on Demarcus Lawrence. You can take away all these lessons from the loss. You can learn from this. You can build on this, but you get the win. You get the best of both worlds. All you have to do now is be humble enough to admit that we messed up, right? We went about this the wrong way. Because you did a lot of things, a lot of things right. You got an amazing performance from Dak Prescott. You got an amazing performance from CeeDee Lamb. Your defense did not allow a touchdown. Think about that for a second. If I, I know that we have been down bad, right? I know that I, I, it's bad. Like we're, Eeyore, Chicken Little, we're all the things, right? We're, we're down bad, all right? But if I had told you on Thursday morning before the game, if I had said Dak Prescott's going to ball out, CeeDee Lamb's going to ball out, the Cowboys won't even let Daniel Jones and the Giants into the end zone one single time. You'd say, yeah, they probably win by 20, right? Because that's kind of the way that goes. That's how that, that makes sense. They won by five. They didn't even cover. And and uh, to say they didn't even cover is a testament to what the line was, to be fair, right? You know, if the line had been three or whatever. I mean, they were five and a half point favorites on the road. It's a difficult line to cover. But that being said, all those things happened and all those things worked in their favor. They won the turnover battle, right? Like all these different things. And they still barely won. Take the lesson from the moral loss. Do not let this be a situation where you get up on your high horse and you think that you're doing everything right just because you won. Do not do that. You stop the bleeding, pitchforks down, learn the lesson, make a move, and we can still do something here. The Cowboys, you look, you're two and two, all right? Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe the Eagles lose to the Bucks. Maybe the Commanders lose to the Falcons, right? Maybe those things happen. It's still very early in the season. October only begins next week, as evidenced by the fact that my Houston Astros are on fire, baby. Watch out. Bring on the Tigers. I don't care. Bring them on. I don't care how hot they are. But anyway, either way, learn the lesson from the loss. Build upon this. Do something. It is too late to do a lot of the important things, but it's not too late to do all of them. And that's all we're asking. Be humble enough at this point in time. You have dragged us to this moment. Do not pound your chest and act like you did something impressive. Take it as a moral loss. Be happy with the win. Be content. Be grateful for the win. You fought for it. You earned it. Stand tall. Be proud. Have conviction in that. But take the lesson. And to be clear, I'm talking to the front office. The players want to brag about this. Go for it, dude. This was tough. I mean, at one point in time, you're operating without Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs is not 100% and Zach Martin's not 100% and all this stuff, all this chaos on a short week. And my, I can't believe, by the way, how much was made about the fact that this was the first Thursday short week game, travel, road game, whatever for the Cowboys ever. I understand that that, that was literally true, but it was amazing how big of a story that became. But either way. You want to feel proud about that, players? Go for it. You want to feel proud about that, Mike McCarthy? Go for it. But you have a lot of things to work on, too. You have a lot of self-reflection that needs to be going on with you right now. Mike Zimmer, you guys, you got to have a meeting. Got to, got to have several meetings. Somebody's got to take notes. There might be maybe some minutes. Some Robert's Rules of Order need to be implemented while y'all are meeting because this is some chaos here. But you have the time now. You have the time to meet. And that's what we want to see. We want to see you improve. We want to see you get better because we're going to chill out and we're going to let y'all um, – let y'all 
let y'all work. That's the plan right here. Uh, the plan for you should be, whoops, didn't mean to put that up, to subscribe to the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel on the way to 30,000 subscribers. This was the post-game show. It was a lot of fun. It's always better when the Cowboys win. And like I said, tomorrow is Victory Polo Monday. So take a picture, take a selfie of yourself in a polo, a t-shirt, a cap, pinch your fingernails. I don't care. Tag me on Twitter, Instagram, or threads at RGO Show, and I will share them. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out. I know it's a late night for everyone. Um, the Cowboys won, and no matter how down bad we are on them, that always is such an amazing feeling. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, like I said, lots coming your way over the weekend, so make sure to subscribe. Two videos on Friday and then a video both on Saturday and Sunday with some special guests. I think you'll enjoy them. Thanks so much for hanging out. See you next time.